All right, today we are servicing and inspecting a P-Drive clutch. This is a 2018 850 Summit. Um, the first step is do some general inspection. Check the rollers here for any flat spots. Check these rollers for any flat, flat spots and make sure they move. Uh, you can do that at all three different locations as well and make sure that cam uh, arm is moving as well. So down here, halfway down on the cam arm, there's a bolt that comes in and this is the bolt that you change for different altitudes. Um, these bolts are available in different weights, different weights as well as um, they can come with different washers as well, so you can do more of a fine-tune adjustment um, on the clutch. So if you're just changing altitude, all you do is take this out. And by the way, all, of, all three of these screws are T25 Torx. So if you want to do an altitude adjustment, this is all you really need to do is take this out. Just like in the old days with the TRA clutches that Skidoo had for several years, they have this ratcheting assembly right here. That you can that you can change and there's different numbers here as you can see it's currently on number two and uh, they're available one through five um, and every, each time you move that it's just like with the tras you'll change the rpm the top the top end rpm about 200 rpms so that's an adjustment as well for uh, fine tuning your sled to make sure your engine stays in its power band so continuing to take the clutch apart for cleaning we'll remove this uh this weight bolt and once we remove that weight bolt, all you need to do is loosen it to change this cam, cam adjustment clicker. Um, but if we, we want to clean it a little bit further than just making that adjustment. So we're going to pull that all the way out, um, which makes it easier for us to remove everything else. So we will remove this bolt and this bolt. So loosen them both because we're going to remove everything. So we we'll take this slightly out, maybe just go about maybe one and a half or two rotations, just so you have a little gap between there and the stop and very gently tap on this because these pins are actually uh, tapered a little bit. Um, and sometimes this clutch has a lot of miles on it. So sometimes these can be a little bit stubborn with this many miles on it, but we're gonna try to tap on that to get that loose. See how now we bottom that out. So this is able to be removed and you do that same process if you're going to remove when we remove that pin or as Skidoo calls them an axle so we'll do that same process yeah keep going until that pin is pin or axle is starting to come out see how it's starting to come out on that back side so we'll take this out the rest of the way it should be loose by now yep, now, it's loose. now it's loose and able to be taken out by hand so we'll finish turning this out the whole way. So this pin is actually really a, a hardened steel. Um, this appears to be a softer, softer steel. So if you have to get pretty aggressive with this and you do end up damaging it, which we really hope that would never happen, it appears like this is probably the replacement parts, which should, should be pretty inexpensive as well and pretty easy to replace. So once you get that pin out, see we had a, a spacer fall down in there. And as we keep pushing this out, we're going to be able to pull that whole assembly out. So now here's our pin. I'm going to grab a little, a little hook tool to be able to get our spacers and our roller out. One thing unique about this roller that seems to be very unique, unique to BRP is if you look in here, there's actually some uh, roller bearing in there and there is a real light grease that's uh, that's that uh, is available to put in there so you know in years past there was always the recommendation not to lubricate clutches but this looks to me like you just put a little grease in here and this will um, you know this will roll on that pin and then there's one more washer here down in there but or excuse me spacer so put that in so we're going to clean all this with like a number four aught steel wool before we put it back together so let's set that off to the side and now we're gonna go over to the over to the, the cam assembly and do the same thing. We loosened this once and again, that's a tapered fit. This bolt head's a little harder to get to. So what we actually found is using a nice punch that goes in here and we aren't damaging the, the Torx head on that bolt when we do it. So I'll try to hold that a little bit here. This is, can get a little bit tight. Is good not to hit your fingers <laughs> um, keep loosening that we might need to do that one more time here
once you get it initially loose, it goes pretty easy from that point forward. And as you can see, we're starting to come out the back end there again. So this whole assembly is loose, like I mentioned earlier, and everything is adjustable. So we're just going to keep going until we can uh, I'm gonna pop that out one more time just to be safe. out the rest of the way all these parts are are uh are common right so the same pins and the same screws all seem to work in all these different assemblies so that pin pops out just like we did with the other one and this whole assembly comes out now this assembly is comprised of four parts and Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory how it goes back together, but this is just simply a, a, a spacer again. Same thing on the other side. This is a spacer and that's where the weight screw goes into. But notice the detents in here. That's where this cam um, uh, goes in where it has to inset into each one of these different rotations as well as you've got the in indicator there too. But as you turn that and notice how it's an oblong right there and our, our cam or our weight is oblong as well so that's how you how you make an impact on the on the way that the sled performs is because of those those oblonged um, those oblong items and it all goes back together like that so take this apart we'll also clean this really really well with the number four ought stainless steel steel wool excuse me and um, we'll also inspect this to make sure there's no grooves or no flat spots in any of this and make sure everything is uh, is is not worn um, also, after we get that all apart, we're going to inspect these rollers as well. Um, these rollers work as guides to try to um, hold the clutch tight when it's under power as well as when you're on deceleration. So as this clutch goes back and forth, this keeps this spider uh, tight and not moving with the, with the movable sheave right here. So these you want to check for, make sure there's no flat spots on those, make sure they're moving and spinning. Um, as they should. Uh, the last step in cleaning, we always recommend cleaning the sheaves to get rid of that belt residue. So use an emery cloth, an 80 or 100 grit emery cloth in like a, a, a circular motions to be able to clean that all off so you get better contact with the sheaves with the belt. It'll, it'll increase your uh, belt life um, and also increase performance significantly as well. And then wash off your residue with something that doesn't leave a re leave any kind of a residue, we recommend like an acetone or a, a paint thinner, and then everything just goes back together the same way as as we took it apart. <laughs>